Uh, I'm with BMC Software, so it's kind of interesting. We're not a cloud uh, vendor from an infrastructure or uh, services standpoint. We're a management company. And what, what is management? What is service management? It's about connecting the dots between people, process, and technology. And uh, when we talk about what are the challenges around hybrid, the number one challenge is people. It's interesting because we're going to talk a lot about great technology, but it's people. And those issues around people revolve uh, first off with the customer's IT. You know, the, the shadow IT, this term of shadow IT that, that's uh, been brought up very negatively, I think actually is the greatest thing in helping faster adoption of private and hybrid clouds. Because it put IT organizations on notice that they're no longer a single monopoly in delivering services to their customers. Now, if it goes unchecked, it can lead to incredible friction and probably not help you as, as you're rolling out a hybrid strategy internally. Also, we all have been in situations where we have multiple stakeholders, all with different expectations. The CFO wants the cost of cloud, lower the overall IT cost. The CEO thinks it's easy and it's something that I've, I read in a magazine on the airplane and you know my competitors are doing it, so we need to go. The head of R&D wants agility and speed. And sometimes collecting all these stakeholders together and having a single business plan is not easy. It's very challenging. And the third one that's often overlooked is you're lacking skills. Very good IT professionals that have been good at maintaining things are not necessarily the best candidates for transforming the organization. And, and they lack skills in critical areas. You heard a lot about architecture today around APIs. We lack some of those skills in the enterprise. We have them plenty in the internet and consumer technologies, but we lack those in the enterprise. We don't have enough folks that understand service and the service orientation. Because the goal of the cloud is not to just deliver uh, products, but it's the experience of the service. When we look at our processes, which is what the people use, oftentimes those processes don't, do not apply to the new operating model. They don't embrace agility and change, and some of the critical elements of the success in the cloud. There's a model around process-based IT controls that have been around for a long time with ITIL and other frameworks. And uh, you know, cloud requires a much more policy-based, much more automated fashion. And security is not a one-time thing, it's a continuous thing. You now have to worry about your noisy neighbors, potentially in a public cloud, not being nice guys. They may be trying to break into your system. So you have to have a different mindset around compliance than you had before. Now, on the technology area, there's many other things that you'll hear from the rest of the panelists. But obviously, one of the critical elements is how do you manage this heterogeneous on-prem and off-prem system? So with that, I'll hand it off to Mark to share some of your views. Yes, as far as the, um, you know, I'll just say infrastructure as a service, I think as a CIO, it's great. You know, what we can do is we can actually focus on applications where we add the most value. So if you go back in time a little bit, you know, I thought SaaS was great. You know, we can actually rent applications as opposed to build them or, or customize them. But I think from, a, from an infrastructure as a service perspective, it's great. Um, you know, as far as the landscape, it's very dynamic. You know, there's lots of new entries in there. I think Amazon has been great. I mean, Amazon has been very disruptive. They've actually pushed IT much harder than they have ever had to be pushed in the past. You mentioned the monopoly. Monopoly's over. You've got to move very fast. You've got to be able to be cost competitive and so forth. So I think it's really good as far as what, um, you know, what these cloud providers are, are, are actually making us better you know, as far as uh, CIOs. You know, we've mentioned some of the larger players. There's a lot of new entrants every day. You know, there's new folks. I mean, they're focusing on certain areas, maybe just security you know, in the cloud. Maybe I'm going to be the less expensive one and so forth. But I think it's, it's really good, and in, in, in the uh, marketplace is, is uh, changing quite a bit. From a selection process, I mean, I really look at three things. I mean, what's the business driver? Do you have a short-term need? Well, if you just want to do something very quick, that's, that's different from actually running maybe part of your business in the cloud. So you want to look at that very closely. Do you want to, do you want to save some money? I mean, there's ways of saving money. You may ne not necessarily want to put your mission-critical apps in an area where you're going to save money. 
Um, risk tolerance, you know, security, that's usually raised as one of the biggest uh, obstacles. You know, are things going to be secure in the cloud? I would always ha almost have a counter argument that some of these cloud providers probably have better teams that are focused on this. Maybe they're better than your organization as far as security. Maybe not. But nevertheless, it's raised as a, as a um, you know, as a big barrier, availability, and then there's the viability. You know, there's a lot of smaller players out there that are doing cloud. Do you really want to be working with a small uh, cloud provider that may not get the next round of funding? So it's just something to think about. Now, if it's short term, maybe you don't worry as much. And then there's just the traditional things. You know, do they solve my business problem, you know, references and so forth. But these are some of the things that I think from a CIO perspective you want to think about when you go into the cloud. Um, so as we think about cloud and hybrid cloud, um, there's a couple of things that stand out for me. Uh, so one, you know, we've got this disruption to the historic approach around cloud. But it used to be that sort of top picture you can't, you can't kind of make out. It basically, it used to be everything was inside the enterprise. The people, the technology, the bus between the people, the, the screen and the computer and so on were kind of literally all inside of a box. Now it's I've got 1099 folks, I've got contract resources, I'm doing cloud cloud sourcing or crowdsourcing, all the components are sort of disassembled. Um, dealing with an end-to-end -end service built upon technology that has been basically exploded into the cloud is challenging. Uh, so the way, let me, let me tell you a brief story that I think will sum this up nicely. So my epiphany around the fact that as, a, as an IT leader, I had to have a different thought around IT service management and IT service integration in a cloud-based world came a couple of years ago. It was uh, New Year's Eve day. Uh, my CFO was in New York City. My uh, uh, CEO and the rest of the executive team were in California. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the CEO was actually in Dallas. The rest of the team was in California. And uh, I get this call about 2 in the afternoon. My CFO can't get an email on his BlackBerry uh, that was vital to be able to do, uh, actually make a decision around how we were going to close the quarter. Um, so we investigate. Right? So the BlackBerry. It's on a carrier. Uh, so first of all, is that is this BlackBerry working right to uh, deal with a carrier? Uh, second of all, it's a BlackBerry, so it's going through the BlackBerry network. Third, it's uh, all that data is being connected through a Bez server that's actually outsourced to HP and sits in an HP data center. Uh, oh, and by the way, we had moved Exchange to a Microsoft BPOS cloud. So Exchange is actually run by a service provider in, in Microsoft, and the help desk is manned by, uh, by a, a staff in Costa Rica. So all of a sudden, the typical problem, right? How do I fix this? Well, I get everybody on the phone together, we'll get a call going. Uh-uh. Because you've got eight levels of escalation to get somebody from Microsoft to care about getting on a call with one customer when they're dealing with thousands, et cetera. Uh, the net of it is, as we went back and forth, uh, what we discovered on a couple of hours later was that Microsoft, in terms of doing some load balancing, took all of our, our users who, as it turns out, had, uh, you know, uh, um, holds on, you know, non-delete on their mailboxes because they were, you know, my executive team who typically is on a new discovery of some sort or another. So their mailboxes got too big. So they, in the back end, moved them to a new server, which is perfectly fine if you're a service provider load managing load on a, on a cloud-based contract. But it's very complex. If it turns out that changes a bunch of things to the Bez server, which changes a bunch of things and so on. So it took us a couple of hours to figure that out. And I realized, so I don't own end-to-end -end service anymore. So I need a different model. I need a different way of thinking of ITSM and a different way of thinking of the cloud in order for me to solve end-to-end -end business problems that my end users have that are far more complicated than I can't get email on my BlackBerry. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure to be here. I work for Google, and my name is Shailesh Rao. Uh, I head up the Google Cloud Platform business. Uh, we're one of the new entrants to the space, as Mark pointed out, one of the later players. And um, what, I've, what I'd like to do is just, you know, give you a quick overview of kind of what, what, we, what we call the cloud platform within Google. There's compute, there's storage, there's services. Um, and I think all of that is pretty familiar to most of you, so there's nothing new there. But uh, what, I've, what I've been struck by uh, in the last you know, hour or so that I've been here is a lot of great, great points, great topics. I think everything's very relevant. The one thing that I, I saw coming up over and over again was you know, what are we going to do today in the enterprise? How do we deal with these challenges today? I'd like to suggest something. How are we going to deal with them tomorrow? And I think that is the biggest challenge facing CIOs, facing all of you today. I think it's very easy 
to look at where we are today and look at the problems we have today and try to figure out, you know, hybrid cloud, public cloud, private cloud. Great debate, and, and I think we should have that. But you know, we tend to overestimate the impact of change in the short term, but we always under underestimate the impact of such transformations in the long term. Not too long ago, we were all debating, you know, how should mobile work, how should it be, how should it be in the enterprise? And that was when, in 2011, we were predicting that mobiles would, you know, that smartphones would overtake PCs sometime in 2016 with a 0.7 probability or something like that, right? And it happened in 2014. We haven't learned. Today, we're again making those same predictions about tablets, right? Ten years ago, I was at Salesforce.com, and I had gone from Siebel Systems, and I remember literally being asked to leave meetings when people said, are you kidding me? You're gonna, I'm going to put my forecast data in the cloud, in the, your cloud. I don't have control. You must be crazy. And those were the nice people, right? <laughs> now, today, I heard folks talk about how they, that's the game changer, right? It's Amazon. It's Salesforce. So I would like to suggest, as we're having this debate, to think about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen three to four years from now. Because I think that gets lost in the debate about all these new technologies. Now, there's a, there is a curve in everything, and you're familiar with all kinds of curves, right? We're in that transformation right now, in my opinion. You know, we can argue, we can put up slides and say, you know, hybrid's going to win, cloud, public, private, house. I don't know the answer. I think there will be a little of everything, right? But I think it's going to be across a continuum. How many of us use Netflix? Okay, how many of us still pay our cable provider to watch TV shows? Is that a hybrid environment for your TV watching? I think so, right? And we can debate all we want about whether in the future we're going to be all Netflix, all instant streaming, or we're going to keep paying our cable providers for to watch, you know, I don't know, whatever, you know, uh, the Cosby show on reruns. But that's not the point. The point, if we take a longer term view, here's what I would suggest. Ten years ago, how many of us went to Blockbuster? How many of us go to Blockbuster now? We try very hard. We can't, they don't exist. right? <laughs> because they don't exist. These examples are there everywhere. And the last point I'd make is, as CIOs, as executives in IT, and in enterprises, let's look at who are going to be your customers tomorrow, OK? A few years from now. I'll tell you who they'll be. When Microsoft announced Satya's CEO, this was, I think, on Monday, uh, I woke up in the morning. I was making breakfast for my son. He's 13. And he gets up before me, and he looks at his news. He's a debater, so he does his thing. He has a few sites he goes to. And I said, hey, Sagar, how are things going? Great. Hey, Dad, did you see about the new CEO? He doesn't know Satya. Or, yeah. I guess it's all about cloud now, huh? Oh, wow. By the way, he's not a programmer. Unlike many of his friends, who he's 13, who have written apps on the iStore, on the Play Store, he actually is not into programming. He's into computers, but he's not a programmer. That's what he says. Those are the people who are going to be working in your companies tomorrow. So as you think about this evolution, this continuum, I would suggest that it warrants some examination into where the future is going and how is your company going to be prepared for that future. The enterprise of today that we're debating is not going to be the enterprise of tomorrow. Our definition of enterprise as we look at it today will change in three years. I hear concerns about risk and safety and SLAs. I simply think it's a question of control. How many of you can guarantee 99.99 whatever SLAs that cloud providers offer? You want to do it, but none of you can say you're 100% secure, reliable ever. If you do, let me know. I want to buy call options on you, <laughs> on you, right? So we have a tendency to take Black Swan events, the one time that your best server was down, or the one time that something didn't work, and then we take that example and say, oh my god, now I shouldn't do X or I shouldn't do Y. That's human nature. I think we should look at the 99.99 .99 times that your email gets through or you can do something in a cloud, and look at the broader picture and the transformation that's happening, and that should inform, I think, our choices. Thank you.